So I hope you enjoyed making the higher or lower app. We're now back in Brow XY to look at two more important programming constructs, the first of which is the loop. So I'm just gonna close down those windows and create a new one with some hello world code. And then just save that so we're ready to go. All right, so a loop is simply a way of running the same chunk of code over and over again. So in a game, that might be controlling the behavior of a character that repeats again and again. In an app, it might be displaying the contents of an array that contains a bunch of the user's photos, something like that. It's very fundamental to programming, and there's a number of different ways that we can do it in Java, and we're gonna look at three of them here in this video. So the first one is very simple, and it's known as a while loop. So let's pretend that we want to print out the numbers one to 10 on the console. So nice and simple. We could of course just print those out, but then if we wanted to change that to print out the numbers one to 100, that would take a very long time. So a loop allows us to do that with minimal code. So we're going to start by creating an integer, which I'll call x. And initially x will be set to one. And this is gonna be our counter variable that counts up from one to 10. And then we're going to use the while keyword and we're going to continue doing our loop as long as x is less than or equal to 10. So that statement means while x is less than or equal to 10. Fairly straightforward. And then we just have our curly brackets. So we're going to do whatever's inside these curly brackets as long as x is less than or equal to 10. And the thing that we're going to do is print x to the console. So system out print line, and we just want to print x. That's it. Beware though, if you run that code now, think about what's gonna happen. Hopefully you realize that this is gonna go on for an ever and ever and ever because X is gonna remain one and probably crash your browser or give you some kind of error. So what we actually want to do is add one to X. And there's two ways we can do that. The longhand way of doing it is to use the command X is equal to X plus one, which will just increment X by one. Or we can use a nice shortcut X plus plus. So this setup is used in a number of coding languages, so you may well have seen it before, but this is how it works in Java. And whenever you want to add one to a number, generally I would recommend using X++ just because it's shorter and easier to use than X equals X plus one. So let's take a look. There we go, nice and easy. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So here's a quick challenge for you. Can you print just the even numbers from one to 10? So just the even numbers between one and 10 inclusive. Go for it. Hope you figured it out. There's a number of different ways to do it. Probably the simplest is to change the command here. So we're printing two times X to the console rather than just X. And that's gonna give us two, four, six, eight, etc. But that of course would take us all the way to 20. And we want the even numbers from one to 10, so we just change X to go up to and include five. There we go, hope you manage that. Two, four, six, eight, 10, there we go. So that's a while loop. The next one we're going to look at is a for loop, which is very similar, but it just keeps everything together in quite a neat way. I'm gonna leave the while loop there because we're going to create the same thing, but in a for loop. So to use a for loop, we use the for keyword. And then this time we create our counter variable inside the instruction for the loop. So this time we're going to create a variable int. I'll call it y this time. And we'll set it to one initially. So int y is equals to one. And then we use a semicolon, even though it's not quite the end of the command yet, it's just the end of that bit of the command. So initially we're going to set y to one. 
we're going to carry on as long as y is less than or equal to 5. So exactly the same as before. And each time we run the loop, we're going to add 1 to y. So that's y plus plus. And that's all that we need to set up our for loop. Then we have our curly brackets. And same as before, we're going to have system out print line y times 2. There we go. And if we just run that, we'll see that it space 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 again. So almost always you can choose whether you want to use a while loop or a for loop. I, to be honest, find myself using while loops most of the time, but you'll probably have your favorite and you really can choose whichever you like depending on the situation. So let's just mess with these a little bit. I'm going to get rid of the while loop for now. So what if we wanted to do things in the opposite order? So we wanted to go 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Well, as you can imagine, we start with y is equal to 5. We keep going as long as y here, I'm going to put greater than 0. So we keep going as long as y is greater than 0. And instead of adding 1 to y each time, we subtract 1 from y each time. And then if we run that, we'll find that we start off with 10. There we go. And then we subtract 2 each time because we're subtracting 1, but then doubling it. All right, so I'm going to give you a couple of challenges this time. You can choose which one to do. There's an easier challenge and then a harder challenge. The easier challenge is to choose whichever loop system you like and display the first 10 multiples of 3. Okay, fairly straightforward. You can do that if you like. If you want a bigger challenge, then create a loop that will display the first 10 triangular numbers. And I'm not even going to tell you what the triangular numbers are. Part of the challenge is to go and find that out for yourself. So if you want a nice basic challenge, go for the first 10 multiples of 3. If you want more of a challenge, then create a loop to display the first 10 triangular numbers. Whichever one you go for, good luck. Go for it. All right, hope that went well. I'm going to go for a for loop. And I'm going to do it slightly differently to the way we did it before. I'm going to create our integer. I'm going to call it i this time. i is usually the counter variable that we use. You can use absolutely any letter or word that you like, but i is quite common. And I'm going to start off with i being 3. I'm going to keep going as long as i is less than or equal to 30, because the tenth multiple of 3 is, of course, 30. Oops, I'm going to change that from a comma to a semicolon. And then I'm going to use i equals i plus 3 as my rule every time the loop goes round. There we go. So hopefully that makes sense. We start with i as 3, we add 3 every time, and we keep going as long as i is less than or equal to 30. And if we do it that way, then this line just becomes system out println i. Simple as that. So let's take a look. 36912, fantastic, all the way up to 30. Brilliant. So whichever way you did that, well done. For the tougher challenge then, let's get rid of that. And we want to now print the first 10 triangular numbers. So I hope you did something like Googled triangular numbers. And if you didn't know before, the triangular numbers are numbers that represent triangles or that triangles can easily be made from. So we start with 1, 3, 6, 10. And the key thing about triangular numbers is they the difference between them goes up by 1 each time. So for the first triangular number to the second, we add 2. From the second to the third, we add 3. From the third to the fourth, we add 4, etc, etc. So there's a great number of ways that we could do this. Because I used a for loop last time round, I'm going to use a while loop this time. So let's start by defining my x. We'll start with x is equal to 1. And this time I'm going to keep going as long as x itself is less than or equal to 
10. So x is not going to be my triangular number. x is going to be my counter variable. And that helps because I don't know what the 10th triangular number is. And if I do it this way, I don't need to know, at least not while I'm writing the code. So let's not forget to increment x at the end of that portion of the loop. Otherwise, it will go on forever. And then I'm going to create another integer. I'm going to call it triangular number. And my first triangular number is equal to 1. So I'll save that there. And then in my loop, I'm going to print triangular number to the console. So, so far, this is just going to print 1 10 times. So to make this into the triangular numbers, remember I need to add on 2 first time, 3 the next time, 4 the next time, 5 the next time, etc. So if I go down below the point where I've incremented x, so x the first time round is now 2, and then it's going to be 3, and then 4, and then 5, and that is of course the number that I need to add to triangular number to get the next triangular number. So I can just use triangular number equals what it was before, so triangular number plus x. And then next time round, when it loops round, it will print the new triangular number, which will be the next one in the sequence. That's it. That's my solution. Let's just have a look and make sure that that works. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28. Fantastic. Those are indeed the first 10 triangular numbers. Great. I hope you managed to do one of those two challenges. Particular congratulations if you managed to do the trickier one. Now let's get rid of that because I'm going to show you the third type of loop. And that is looping through the contents of an array. And that's a really useful thing to be able to do. To use the example that I said earlier, we would have an array of a user's photos and display all of those using a loop. So very mini challenge for you. Can you create an array containing the names of the people in your family? So just three or four. If you've got more, feel free to put them in, but just three or four names to be working with. Go for it. I hope you remembered how to do that. So they're strings and we use these square brackets to show that we want to create an array. I'm going to call my array family members and then we set it equal to and we're going to use curly brackets to create the array and here I go. So Rob, Kirsten, Tommy and Ralphie and then a semicolon. So hopefully you remember that construct from last video. Now to loop through that, one thing that we could do would be to use a for loop and just keep going as long as we were in the loop, but there's a much quicker way of doing it and that's to use what you might know as a for each loop. So it just loops through everything in the array. So the way we do that is we use our for command and then we want to create a variable that will be the name each time round, each time we go through a particular member of the array. So that's going to be a string and I'll call it name and we're going to get it from the array family members. So that's a new Kind of construct that we haven't seen before and it's quite specific to this particular setup so for and then we create our variable name which is a string and we're going to get that from the family members array by looping through it and then we can access the variable name in the middle of the loop just in the usual way so system out print line and name. That's it. So let's take a look. There we go. So that's looped through the whole of the array and allowed us to access each value within it. 
The last thing I want to show you is how to do this with an array list. So a final little challenge for this video, can you change this code so instead of creating an array like we've got here, it creates an array list called family members and then adds your family members to that list and then run the code and see what happens. Good luck. All right, I hope you saw what happened and you got some kind of error message. So to create our array list, just like we did in the previous video, we would use list and then family members. And that's a new array list. All very familiar. Before we get any nasty errors, let's make sure that we import what we need. So java.util.star. And then we add our members to our list. So family members.add. And then Rob. And I'm just going to copy that so you don't have to watch me type it four times. Kirsten, Tommy, Ralphie. Okay, so you may think that all looks fine, but we're going to get an error. There it is. So incompatible types. So we needed a string here when we created our name, but the actual variable type that we found is an object, which is slightly strange because these are all strings. You would have thought that would all be fine, but it's not. And that's because when we created our list, we didn't define what type of variable was going to be stored in our list. And that means that we end up with an object, which is a kind of generic type of variable, which doesn't allow us to create a string from it. So to get around that, we'd need to specify the type of variable that we want to have in our list. And we do that using angled brackets when we create the list. So we want to have strings so we use list and then angled brackets with string afterwards. And similarly, we put that in after our array list command as well. So just like that. So now we've created exactly what we had before, but this time they're all strings rather than the more generic objects. And let's now run that and we should find that it all works fine. There we go. So it is conventional if you know what type of object is going to be in your list to define it right at the start and that then stops you having to have problems later on. Brilliant, so now we've covered our three loop types. In the next video we're going to check out classes and objects in a bit more detail so hopefully you'll finally understand what all this object-oriented programming is all about.